Hello, my name is Drackle, and today we're going to be talking about the basics of redstone. This is going to be the basics of redstone part two. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link it in the description. You probably want to do that if you haven't done anything with redstone before, because today we're going to be talking about logic gates. And a quick note before we begin, hello to all my new subscribers and people visiting the channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed, do it now, or I will reach through the monitor and punch you. Um, if you are new to the channel, go to the playlist tab and you'll see my Let's Play Minecraft, my tutorials, my shorts, and uh, all sorts of other stuff that I did before Minecraft. Okay, so that being said, let's jump straight into this, shall we? So here we have the most basic logic gate, but let's step back a second. Whoa, you see what I did there? Okay, what's a logic gate? Well, you know how you're sitting on a computer right now watching me on YouTube? That's made possible by a series of logic gates. In fact, a huge number of logic gates. Now, the computer you're on is made up of circuit boards, and those circuit boards contain tons and tons of logic gates, which basically control the flow of electricity. And electricity is either on or off, or in binary, one or zero. And that allows us to do all the really cool shit that we do on computers. Now, you can replicate those logic gates in Minecraft. They may not look the same, but they do the same thing. And that lets us do all the crazy circuitry that we do. So, let us begin with the most basic of logic gates. It's called the NOT gate, the N-O-T gate. And it's basically just this block. Yeah. So, the block is connected to this lever, which runs into the block with this redstone wire here. And then through this torch to the piston. Now notice the torch is powering this piston right now, holding back a block of water. But what happens when I turn this lever on? Okay, it turns this on, which goes into this block, turns the torch off, and then turns this part off. And that works because a redstone torch with a block on it acts as an inverter. It inverts the signal. It inverts it from being on to off. Now, this is very simple not that difficult to understand and it's probably the most useful gate I use it every single day when I play Minecraft um, whether it's in a larger gate system logic gate system or just on its own now it's useful for tons of things I mean in this case we're holding back back water because we want the piston to be extended until we hit that lever or we could use a button which makes a better example now when we hit the button the piston opens and water flows right okay also very useful for double doors, since double doors, one door needs an opposite power state to the other door, or else they don't open at the same time. And I'm, I'm actually waving my hands back and forth, but you can't see that, so I'm a fucking retard. Anyway, we're going to move on from the inverter, and we're going to talk about the AND gate, A-N-D. Now the AND gate is probably the next most basic gate, and it's also probably the next most useful gate. Now the AND gate... What it does is what you think it does. It takes two inputs, and if both of them are on, then it produces an output that is also on. So basically, if I turn both of these levers on, that piston is going to extend. Very simple. Now, let me step back for a second and say in my tutorials, I not only teach you how to build stuff, I teach you how to understand it. And the reason for that is, if you don't understand it, you'll never be able to progress, really, with redstone. Or anything really if you don't have a good cra uh, grasp of the concept and if you if you can grasp those concepts you could make your own stuff you could invent new logic gates you could you know you could uh, add to the progress and innovation that is redstone in Minecraft as geeky as as nerdy that's as that sounds it will give you a much more rewarding experience okay I just nerded out on you for a second I apologize it probably will happen again in about five seconds anyway uh, so how does the AND gate work? Well, quite simple. And it's actually easier if I do it this way. This will be an easier explanation. Okay, I'm just going to switch things around a little bit. Alright. How do you build an AND gate? Well, one torch here, one torch here, redstone in the middle, and a torch attached to this block right here. And then here's your output, and there are your two inputs. Now you should probably build it the way I had it first, 
because uh, that's a little bit more compact, but this is a demonstration. Now, you see the inputs are going into the block with this torch and the block with this torch. And as we know from inverters, um, an input with uh, being on will turn a torch off. So that happens on both sides. Notice when I turn this lever off, it turns this torch on and vice versa. Now when both of these are on, this uh, redstone wire in the middle is no longer on, which allows this torch, which is also another inverter, to be powered. But if I turn one of the inputs off, it is no longer an AND gate. Well, it's an AND gate, but it's no longer an AND situation. And we have this redstone being on, which is turning this torch off, which turns the output off. Okay, I hope I explained that well. Fairly simple, though. Very useful. I use it in a ton of things. And the reason I moved these blocks out is so you can see um, more clearly what's happening. Um, this torch is actually powering the redstone wire, as is this, and it's going into the middle torch. Alright, now here we have a NOR gate. And it keeps getting dark here. A NOR gate, what it is, NOR gate, is basically when all of the inputs to the gate are off, the output's on. So these levers are off and it's extending this piston with, with the output. Now you might be saying, hey, that's just an inverter. You're making this shit up as you go along. Well, no. Um, if it has more than one input into an inverter, we call the NOR gate. Don't ask me why. That's just how it is. Um, now what can you use a NOR gate for? Well, tons of stuff. Um, combination lock, very simple combination lock, for instance. Very easy to make. Another thing you can use it for is kind of similar to an AND gate. Remember the AND gate, if both inputs are on, it turns the output on. Well, in this case, if all the inputs are off, then the output is going to be on. So the difference is we can have three inputs rather than two, just like this. If I turn any of these on, it's going to not be extended. But if I turn all of them off, it works. Now, it's just a question of the levers being off in the NOR gate as opposed to being on in the AND gate. That's it. You just got to remember the lever position. OK, so we have the NOR gate done. Now we're going to do an OR gate, an OR gate. Now an OR gate activates when either of two inputs are on, just as you think it would. So right now, these inputs are off. The lever here and the pressure plate here. Now I've, uh, I've rigged this up a little differently, I guess, than most OR gates are. And uh, if you've watched part one of the Redstone series here, you'll know what these repeaters are doing. The repeaters are actually sending power into the block. And then the block itself is powered, which is powering this piston. So as you can see, if either of those inputs are on, that piston is going to be extended. Just like that. Now the OR gate is useful. Um, say you have a door, for instance, and you want a manual lever to open it from somewhere, or you want a pressure plate right in front of the door to open it. Well, you can use an OR gate. Fairly useful. Uh, I use this every so often when it's necessary. All right, so we're going to finish up this episode by talking about memory. Yes, you can create memory circuits in Minecraft. And the most basic memory unit is a 1-bit memory cell. If you've seen Tron, the original Tron, um, the guy has a, a bit memory unit following him around. And all it does is say, yes, 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 no, no, no. Because a bit only stores one, or, uh, one of two states of information, basically. You can think of it as 1 or 0, or a yes or a no. That's how it works. And the way we replicate that in Minecraft is called an RSNOR latch. Now, in this case, this is how you make it. It's a, not the most compact version, but it's the easiest one to understand. Now we have a torch attached to a block, which goes around into this block, which comes out of this torch, and then connects back into the original, blo <coughs> excuse me, the original block like this. So it forms a loop. Now, what are these buttons for? Well, these buttons are for the set and reset, hence RSNOR. Um, I think it's technically supposed to be called SRNOR, not quite sure on that, but I think someone fucked up somewhere along the line. Anyway, uh, so what's going to happen when I press this button? It's going to turn this torch off, which turns this off. 
it allows this torch to turn itself on and then this side will be powered so in other words when I hit this button this side will go off that side will go on just like that so why is that useful well what happens if I hit the button again nothing nothing happens because it remembers that you press the button and that's the memory part of it it has now set its state and it will stay permanently like this until you reset it now let's connect the piston to this shall we pretend that's a door or something or, or whatever now that piston will stay act, uh, unactivated until I reset the circuit and you reset the circuit by pressing the opposite button so now you have this state set and it will be permanently set until you reset it by pressing the other button you can't use levers um, I'm sure someone's been asked about that but you cannot use levers because if you have both of them powered on the same time it's all sorts of fucked basically so you gotta use buttons that is a one bit memory cell it's the most basic um, you also besides latches you have gated latches you have flip flops uh, you know a whole bunch of uh, different arrays of memory you also have delay line memory which was used back in the computers of the 1940s, 1950s, that kind of stuff. All sorts of really cool things you can do with memory in Minecraft. For instance, that over there, that big sandstone contraption with uh, the colored wool, is actually a 60-bit memory cell. And you're wondering, how the hell did I fit 60 of those into that small thing? Well, it's actually based on piston memory. It's like a punch card reader. Um, I'll probably do an episode about that later quite cool that's a very common way of people doing memory these days now latches right what can you do with latches well let me show you one of my little projects here if you you've probably seen my combination lock video where I use the, uh, the pistons in the water well I came up with a little bit of a better way to do it and I also came up with uh, I guess a, a new way of looking at combination locks I haven't seen one of these around I assume it's been done but uh sort of just came up with it. And this is a what I'm, I'm going to call a one-shot lock. You basically only have one shot at the combination and then you're done. Uh, it won't work after that one shot at the combination, basically. Um, it has an optional reset to it if you want to let the person reset the lock, basically. And that's here. And remember, a latch has a set and a reset to it? Well, that's what I just pressed over there because all those latches are in the same state. As you can see, all those torches are on like that, and all these torches down here are off. Okay, and this is a more compact version of the latch that uh, my friend came up with, Christina. It's uh, fairly compact, I like it. It even looks nice. So, anyway, so what can you do with this? Well, I have a button here connected to latch number one. I press it, the latch sets in that state, let's call it state one. And obviously nothing happens if I press the button again. So I'm going to press all these buttons. Okay, that was my shot at the combination. I didn't get it right. So that door, if I had a door over there, would not open. That's one way you can use latches, because I'm basically saying, okay, I want you to remember when that button was pushed. And if that button has been pushed already, I don't want anyone to push the button again. So that's a very simple use of a latch, um, probably the most common use. So yeah, that's uh, Basic Redstone Part 2. Uh, I hope I've covered everything uh, that I wanted to cover. I know I wanted, I know I covered everything I wanted to cover, but I hope I covered everything that I should have covered, put it that way. Um, if you have any questions about this, if I didn't explain anything clearly, uh, send me a PM or leave a comment and I'll try to do it. But um, there's only so much I can do in a short video. I didn't want to go over, you know, like about 15 minutes or so. I'm not quite sure how long we are right now, but yeah, that's that's really it. I think in part three we'll go into some of the more complex logic gates. Probably do an XOR gate, which is very very cool. Uh, maybe an XNOR. Um, I, I really want to do a monostable circuit at one point. As well as, as well as other things, I'll probably do separate episodes on how to create flip-flops, because those are the most complex memory units, things of that nature. All right, so this has been Dracul. I hope you've liked, it, liked this, and if you did, subscribe, or uh, like I said, I'm going to reach with the monitor and punch you, and then I'm going to, you know, go out with your sister, you know, something like that. Who knows?
So you don't want that to happen, so you better subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.